The lighthouse enjoys a prominent position in the museum and can be seen from the southeast freeway. The construction of Expo 88 is well underway adjacent to the museum in South Brisbane. And so this particular YouTube is the first uh, in what I'm calling the Monumental Museum series or playlist. Uh, and we are starting it very appropriately, I think, on Anzac Day. And this uh, morning we are going to explore some of the more unique items uh, on the campus here, uh, but with a very special purpose in mind as will be unveiled as we move forward. But first this morning, it is my great pleasure, come over here, Stuart. G'day. Morning everyone, this is Stuart Wright, he is a duty manager. And Stuart's role, besides opening up and flying the beautiful flags, is to be the responsible person on site to make sure that you, as the visitor, get a really great experience. Good morning everybody, my name is Jeff Watson, I'm the volunteer coordinator here at the Queensland Maritime Museum on this beautiful sunny Queensland day 2021. As you can see directly behind me we are flying two Queensland flags today and we're also going to investigate and look further into the historical artefacts relating to Queensland here at the Queensland Maritime Museum. At how the Lucinda replica smoking room fits into the Australia narrative. It is of national importance, that smoking room, and we're going to find out why as we just listen to the words of Senator Brandis uh, talking to the Senate chamber. Thank you. On, let's have a look at what the Attorney General, who was a Queenslander, Senator George Brandis said on the 4th of April 2001, and it, that was a Wednesday, and he actually said it at 7.40. Senator Brandis, in this centenary year of Federation, the great events which led to the creation of the Commonwealth are being celebrated in numberless ways across the land. This evening, I would like to say a few words about one of the more notable of those commemorations by the Supreme Court of Queensland. In doing so, I acknowledge the presence of the in the President's Gallery of the Chief Justice of Queensland, the Honourable Paul de Jersey. Last Friday evening, some 300 people gathered at the Supreme Court in Brisbane for the official opening by the Emeritus Professor Geoffrey Bolton of the major historical exhibit dedicated to the drafting of the Commonwealth Constitution and in particular to the central role of, in those events of the then Premier of Queensland, Sir Samuel Griffith. Sir Samuel was of course later to become the first Chief Justice of Australia. The centrepiece of the exhibit is a faithful and painstaking reconstruction of the gentleman smoking room of the Queensland government yacht Lucinda. I have always thought it was a shame that so few Australians have an appreciation of the romance of the federal story and there can be few episodes among those great events so romantic as the role of the Lucinda and the Queensland Maritime Museum has that very exact 2001 replica right in our exhibit, right here. So, as we move forward in relation to the narrative of the Lucinda, the next logical part before I spoke about this booklet, I thought we would just have a look here in this uh, deck area, uh, replica of the Lucinda, which does have a lot of real artefacts from the Lucinda. Uh, the trunk, its furniture, its steering wheel uh, and some of the banisters and that from the Lucinda. It is quite amazing what the Queensland Maritime Museum has from the Lucinda and only this week the Queensland Supreme Court Library has agreed to give further very important artefacts to the Queensland Maritime Museum. So in the very last section, you're going to see the monument uh, that was part and parcel of this display. But what you're looking at here is the replica of the smoking room. Beautifully handcrafted, 
made to exact replica dimensions. It is, without a shadow of a doubt, a national treasure because it is so symbolic of one of the most important events in Australia's history, that being the drafting of our constitution. And this booklet that was produced by the Supreme Court Library back in 2001, um, which we will be scanning a copy of and putting up on our internet pages, uh, really just has some absolutely incredible history of the smoking room and its role in drafting the Federal Constitution of Australia. And it is just a great shame that there are now so few of these booklets available. However, with technology scanning, we'll be able to solve the problem and get the information out onto the internet. Now let's just have a look at the monument. This plaque, this monument, is important to our narr narrative as to why the Queensland Maritime Museum is so monumental. We have uh, the plaque commemorates the opening of the QGSY Lucinda smoking room reconstruction on the 30th day of March 2001 by Ch Professor Geoffrey Bolton, AO, in the presence of the Honourable Paul Jersey, who is now our Governor, and other Honourable members of the High of the Court. It's just an incredible an important piece of history that really gives providence to this replica room. So in conclusion, here we are at the Supreme Court Library, Library replica. That is the pigeon pair to the uh, smoking room. This is really incredibly crafted to exact detail. And it's just a great way to end this YouTube on this quite incredible national monument in our collection. Second in a series is dealing with two engineering stars of excellence. One is for the diamond tanner and the second one is for the dry dock itself, which is the reason why I've come up here so that everyone can get an idea of the dry dock before we actually go down into the museum itself. Very photogenic. About to go in. And uh, yeah, very happy and cheery staff are waiting to greet you. This morning we'll start out with the first marker that was uh, awarded to the Queensland Maritime Museum. And that is the dry dock engineering market. So the engineering markers were in part uh, through the pumps which have an interesting history and I actually find the installation of the electric motors the most visually appealing as we'll hopefully see in a second. Then secondly the actual construction of the dry dock was uh, a feat of engineering excellence in its own right and even going down to the site selection because this site rarely floods uh, and even during the 2011 flood it only flooded just barely unfortunately it just overtopped the dry dock and so the diamantina floated and the carpenteria sank on this Labor Day weekend 2021 uh, this is where the electric engines are with their intriguing pulley system going down to the original pumps and it's locked probably not surprisingly second marker engineering marker of excellence was in relation to the diamond tina now behind us is the diamond tina above us is the Australian flag flying proudly on the Diamond Tina and there's a very interesting story to be told in relation to the engineering marker of excellence 
for the Diamond Tanner. So let's move on and look at that market. Before us uh, is the engineering marker which sets out the rationale and the logic as to why Engineering Australia awarded the Diamond Tanner the marker and it makes for very interesting reading. In this last part of the section of this YouTube, here is the official marker. Now the dry dock as yet does not have its full and proper marker but I'm led to believe that it is on the way and it will be installed on site because it is very important not only to get the information signage but to actually get the formal marker itself and this marker was uh, unveiled last year during the 75th anniversary um, of VP Day by uh, the governor of the state called the Jersey and the awarding of the engineering marker primarily goes to the engines to the powerhouse of the diamond tanner because it was one of the very last of its type functioning in the world when the dry when the ship was put into dry dock and it is a very unique example of the ultimate design of steam engines after 200 years of development so that concludes this youtube and i hope you find it of interest thank you in this The Lighthouse Gallery, I hope to be able to find enough narrative for the Queensland Maritime Museum to be able to secure another engineering star of excellence. It is visually a beautiful display space and museum space. Uh, I think it's as good as anywhere uh, in the world. And the material held is really extraordinarily fascinating with great engineering heritage. Before we get to that, I just wanted to put around me a couple of photos of Russ Hens. Now Russ attended really the very first themed event held in 1985 to celebrate Queensland Day and I had a small role to play. It was actually my suggestion to the board of the retail company McDonald and East in my role as company secretary and special projects manager to have a themed event. So there was the number one Queensland plate on display that Stefan acquired and displayed and still displays, I suspect, on his personal vehicle. It had the model of the now demolished transit center, which was heralded as a major step forward in the development of tourism in the state. Welcome to the Queensland Maritime Museum for the Queensland Day Special. My name's Tennille and I can't wait to see you here. And I'm here this morning on the 24th of April, 2021, with Ocker, correct name, Russell Collins. And Russell uh, has a very interesting story to talk about the Diamantina when it was in its operational phase in Western Australia in the peak of the survey work. So, Russell, over to you. Tell us your story, please. My story. Uh, during that voyage, the uh the ocean was that rough. They closed down the galley for three days because they couldn't cook. Uh, too rough to cook. And we, uh, we had sandwiches for uh, three days. Uh, I remember standing on the after deck as light boy sentry. And so I was two decks above the, the water line. And I was looking up like that to the crest of the waves. And some of those waves were 40, 50 foot. This is a triptych by the British artist John Wood and it's especially relevant for the Merchant Navy Day on September the 3rd because it commemorates the sorts of activities that the Merchant Service did during the war. And this first picture in the triptych 
shows the Chilean reefer, which was a Danish vessel which came over to the Allied side and was under the British flag. During an empty convoy across the Atlantic, 200 miles east of Cape Race, off the coast of Newfoundland, the convoy was attacked by the German battle cruiser Neisenau. During the attack, the Neisenau shelled the Chilean reefer, set her afire, and eventually she sank, but not before the crew managed to escape. In the third picture of the triptych, you can see the survivors from the Chilean reefer being rescued by the British battlecruiser HMS Rodney. So here you have it in three pictures, the sorts of activities and events and the challenges and the seriousness of the Merchant Navy during the war. Do a little interview with the duty manager on site. And the duty manager's responsibility, besides flying the beautiful set of flags, is to make sure that you, as the visitor, get a really great experience. So it's my great honour, Stuart Wright, this is your life. Now, Stuart has a, he's very passionate you tell us your passion about why you enjoy working here, Stuart? I absolutely love the passion of the volunteers here, myself included. We're all volunteers and we just love bringing the joy of uh, history, especially our maritime uh, heritage, and all of these special objects to our visitors to the museum. Uh, we all thoroughly enjoy it, myself included. I've been here for nearly 10 years myself. So I think that uh, that, that speaks to my passion. It does. To the side. So, a passionate individual delivering a passionate experience.